Hey everybody, it's Taylor with Boyston Grove, and today we're going to end 2023 with our very first shop tour. Let's get into it. This is going to be awesome. A couple years ago, my wife and I purchased a 1926 house here in Jacksonville, Florida, and it came with this outbuilding that is 16 by 20 and a little worse for wear. As you can see, it has a really nice tarp roof going on up there because, you know, as they say, and if it ain't broke, then don't try to fix it. Other than the front door, this is exactly how it was when we moved in. I really haven't had the time or the finances to do anything to it. So right now, as long as it's working and it's not falling over, we're going to leave well enough alone. Now, if you're wondering where we got the logo for Boydston Grove, when we initially moved in, this tree right here actually had a tire swing hanging off of it, and that's where we came up with the design. Which kind of leads up to where we got the name Boydston Grove. Originally, we were doing a furniture refinishing business, and when we moved here, there were just so many trees, it looked like a grove, so we decided to call it Boydston Grove. Now, of course, we've grown from that. We're no longer doing the furniture, but the name stuck with us. Now, when we moved in, there was no door on the building. So the first thing I did was build a door and that's why it's raw wood. All right, so we've had a little look at the wonderful outside. Let's go take a look at the inside. All right, to start off, right when you walk in the door, this is where we keep all our yard equipment. And you might recognize the charging station I built a while back. I put it next to the door because I keep a lot of the batteries for my yard equipment on that. So it's easiest to keep it right next to the door. You're probably really familiar with this surface right here because this is where I do a lot of the work for the projects that I work on. The bench was actually here when we moved in. All I have done is replace the top multiple times now. This wall already had the pegboard on it. All I did was add the French cleats. Now, as we continue down, you might recognize the bandsaw that I had pretty much given up on, but I tinkered around with it a little bit and I did get it running. So right now it's okay, long as I'm really careful. Only time will tell, my friends. The cabinet that the bandsaw is on is actually a cabinet that we picked up when we were doing furniture flipping. I put some casters on it and that way I can move the bandsaw around and be able to work with it a little bit better. Right next to that, we have my WEN drill press, which is one of the few tools that I've actually bought totally brand new, and it was worth every penny. I'm so glad I invested in it. As we move down this way, this is kind of a new section of the shop. Originally, this was a bunch of old shelves that had been here when we moved in. I just recently removed them and cobbled together this workstation uh, with just some scrap wood that I had. I just wanted an extra workstation to work at. And I also really like having a large whiteboard that I can start writing plans on. It's really made a difference on how I run my shop. And right over here, we have our newest addition to the shop, the McPow X3 laser engraver. I haven't got to work with it a lot yet, but I'm really looking forward to this new year because I have a lot of ideas rolling around in my head of how we can incorporate this into some of the projects. This corner over here is just kind of like a collection spot of where I just, I just don't have room for any of these larger things, so they kind of sit in the corner over here. Eventually, I have to figure something out because that's where the breaker box is, and right now, it's a little difficult to reach that. And then right here, we have one of the biggest investments that we have made for this shop, and that is the X-Carve by Inventables. I really love this, and I'm so glad that we made the investment. I just wish I had the time to be able to utilize it more because I really think I could integrate it into more of the projects that I'm working on. Next to the X-Carve, we just have a lot of storage of all kinds of things, everything from paint to tools for the X-Carve and the X3 laser engraver, a lot of odds and ends, bolts and nuts, just about anything imaginable ends up right here. And if you've watched any of my videos, you probably recognize this area over here is seeing it as a background. I also use it as a workstation. As you can see, I have a row of clamps here. It's where we keep all our clamps. I have toolboxes that I built because I was a contractor, so I needed to keep a lot of tools in my truck all the time. So I built these toolboxes to go and I don't really do that anymore. So they just pretty much sit right here. It's also where I keep the scroll saw that you see me use on a regular basis. 
This piece of furniture right here, again, was another piece that we picked up when we were doing furniture flipping, and it just wasn't something that we could fix up enough to be able to sell, so it ended up in the shop, and it just turned into a big storage container. Now, as much as I would like to show you floor to ceiling right here, it's a little hard because as of right now, you are backed up all the way against the other wall, so there's not really any room for me to be able to show you everything here. Well, it didn't take us very long to make full circle around, and now we are back to the regular workstation that you're used to seeing. Right next to that is the door into the other half of the workshop, so let's head in there. There's more? There's more. As you come through the door, immediately we run into the bigger tools like my table saw and my miter saw. Over here we just have a bunch of mismatched cabinets that I've gotten from Jobs. These are basically just full of sanding stuff. I've got a lot of sanders, our sanding rack for all our sandpaper and stuff like that. Um, and just extra stuff that we really don't want to get sawdust all over because this section right here fills up with sawdust really fast. Now you're probably wondering what we do for dust collection here at Boydston Grove and the answer is, eh, you're looking at it. That is so sad. I got a large rigid shop vac connected up to one of those little Home Depot cyclone type things and I try to connect it up to each tool as I'm using it and it does almost nothing. So one of the things that we would like to invest in in the near future is some kind of dust collection because it just gets everywhere in here. All right, and as you can see, that double door uh, garage entrance leads right to the table saw where we left off. So let's go this way. All right, so this section is kind of where the mess happens. As you can see, I have my lumber racks here. And as you can also see, there is not one stick of hardwood or anything nice. This is all just scrap that I've picked up from here and there. And in case you haven't noticed, we have plenty of fence pickets for upcoming projects in 2024. Around here is where you'll notice that I keep my small scrap wood. And then this is another piece that we picked up that we were gonna refinish, but this thing is so heavy that we just decided that even if we made it really nice, it would never sell because nobody's gonna wanna haul this thing around. So it just became a permanent fixture in my shop and I keep it full of my old contractor stuff that I used to use a lot. All right, typically this corner over here is for my large sheet goods, but right now we have a big project that is coming up. So I have a bunch of panels in the way. This will all go away because normally here's where I keep my ladders and my wheelbarrow and a bunch of other unexciting stuff. And I'm sure this big lathe caught your attention and you're probably asking yourself why I've never used it or why you've never seen it in a video. This isn't actually mine. This belongs to some good friends of ours. They were in the midst of moving and didn't have a place to keep it. So they gave it to me to hold onto for them and said I could use it, but I've been so busy. I haven't even got a chance to fire it up yet. So maybe before I give it back to them, I'll get a chance to learn how to do some turning on it and I will share that with you. And right next to the lathe is this grinder that I just picked up at a yard sale for like 20 bucks and it came with this interesting looking stand. That is interesting. So my plan is to pretty much remove it from the stand, give it a permanent home here somewhere in the shop and maybe get rid of this. Okay, well that pretty much brings us full circle in the shop. It's not very big. Like I said, it's 16 by 20 and we really have this place packed out with all kinds of stuff. Now, I've always liked to work on projects and always like to make stuff myself, but originally the business started as a furniture business. In fact, a lot of our original videos were just quick clips of furniture flips that we had done. The whole woodworking thing didn't really take off until about four or five years ago, and I just absolutely fell in love with it. And now here we are just a few years later, we've just hit that milestone of 10,000 subscribers. I'm so excited because I absolutely love doing this and I can't wait to see what 2024 brings. And I just wanna give a big thank you to each and every one of you who have made this possible. Just stuck it out with us, subscribe to our channel, leave those comments that are so encouraging. I really appreciate it. Speaking of 10,000 subscribers, if you've been keeping up with the videos, then you know that a couple videos ago, I said that once we hit 10,000 subscribers, we were gonna have a drawing for a random giveaway to one of our subscribers, just as a thank you for sticking with us all this time. 
Well, apparently there's a lot of rules to doing giveaways and things on YouTube, so I kind of did it wrong and we have to kind of start over. Now there's a few rules that we're going to have to set down because YouTube likes rules even when you're doing a giveaway. Number one is going to be you need to be subscribed to be entered into the giveaway. Number two, you need to go check out this video right here where we made the tic-tac-toe board. Number three, you need to comment on that video. And that's it. Just subscribe, watch the video, and leave a comment. And you'll be entered in for the random drawing for our giveaway. Now we're gonna give everybody two weeks from this date to get that done, and then we will have the drawing and we will let you know in two weeks from today who the winner is of our giveaway. Again, just a big thank you to all of you for being involved and taking part in this channel. Thank you very much for watching and have a super happy new year.